Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the podcast. Man, it's been busy with all these interviews, but I love it. I love talking to bands. I love allowing you guys to know more about bands. And I got a heavy one here with us. We have Jake Murphy from Beyond All Hope. Jake, how are we doing today? Doing good, man. How are you? Not bad. So what's going on with Beyond All Hope? Um, I want to. You have this new EP coming out, Life Cycles. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration and themes behind the new EP? Um, so this is just a solo project. I kind of started a couple years ago. Um, just kind of missed making music and decided I need to jump back into it. So I just started recording some stuff out of my house and slowly songs started coming together. Um, basically what this EP is about is life cycles to me is kind of like everybody shares a lot of the same experiences, whether they're good or bad. And I'm just trying to make some music that people can also relate to. Um, some of my personal struggles with like alcoholism and anxiety, depression, loss of friends and other people around you. So it's kind of like the little bit of a highlight of the album, if you will. So these songs have some weight. They have some meaning behind them. And that's that's what I dig my teeth into. That's what I love personally as a fan of music. Um, how many songs are on this? Uh, there's five songs total. And I guess, what was the creative process behind this? Um, you said you, you recorded it yourself, right? Yeah, I did all the vocals myself. Um, I actually found a producer in San Diego, um, Tyler Rule. He works uh, Blackgate Collaborative um, and Blackgate Records. Hit him up and he started throwing me some instrumental tracks. We kind of had some ideas together. And I was just like, I don't really have the capability to do every instrument and vocals and everything. So he uh, definitely slammed together some really good instrumental tracks for me. And I would just kind of catch a vibe from him. And I was picking a topic. I usually... I use the notes app in my phone a lot to just jot down lyrics and ideas and stuff like throughout the day or night or what, whenever. And then I'll just kind of take all that and compile it and make a song. So I'm glad I'm not of, the only one that utilizes the notes app. <laughs> <laughs> no, that thing is full on my phone. <laughs> I'll even find stuff from like five years ago. And I'm like, what was I thinking? Yeah. Yeah. I catch little notes here and there. They're dated way back. I'm just like, I put one sentence in here. I don't even know what I was thinking. <laughs> so what message or feeling do you hope listeners take away from life cycles? Um, I would just say that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, if you will. Um, there's a lot of hope out there that you just, you definitely don't see in the times of struggles that you have. Um, specifically for me, like enemy is definitely a song about anxiety and depression and my struggles going through that. And um, it was, kind of just like my reaching out like hey anybody hearing what's going on with me right now you know because i don't really have a i don't have a good way of just talking to people about things you know for me it's always been music has been my outlet to write something down and say it and you know that's my way of getting it out of my chest basically so very well said there okay so i want to get a little bit more about the band and the sound uh, when i was listening to the songs i'm hearing some Hardcore, some metalcore, some deathcore. What are some of the influences behind, I guess, the EP, the band, the writing? Uh, so for me, I would say like my biggest musical inspirations, um, Haste the Day has always been one of my biggest, most favorite bands okay. ever since early 2000s. Um, the Ghost Inside, Gideon, and over the last few years, Left to Suffer really just it kind of took over my whole musical world and I don't really like necessarily like genre specific type things, you know, for me personally, like if I'm wanting to make music, I don't want every track kind of exactly like just straight death core, straight metal. I like to kind of incorporate a bunch of different things because I'm not really like strictly just a death core guy or metal core guy. So I really like to kind of just blend everything together the best I can and take my inspirations from everywhere. Just make something. When what you I say, like. When you say Gideon, which uh, which version of Gideon? The most recent. Um, <laughs> I've always been a fan of them since the beginning, but once they took a bit of a hiatus and did the label change, it's like they came back with a whole new attitude and vengeance. And they did. Man, I love it. The last few albums have just been solid. Have you seen them live yet? 
I have not. It's been a heartbreaker. I used to um, play a bunch of shows around Oklahoma City, and that was back in like 2010, 2012 era. And they kept coming through, and um, their van actually broke down coming to Oklahoma City a long time ago. And I, I hit up Dan. I was like, hey, if you want to use our van and trailer, you know, that'd be cool. I'll, I'll meet you, meet up with you, and we'll we'll swap it out or whatever. I ended up not working out, but that was going to be like my one opportunity to try and meet him in Oklahoma City at a show and drop off a van and actually finally catch him. But sadly, I have not. That's okay. I saw them. I keep tying everything back into incarceration fest because that's what a lot of my interviews are this month. Plus, I'm going to incarceration in a couple weeks. Anyways, they played last year and boy, did they kill it. <laughs> um, I've been listening to them since um, first two albums and then... My favorite iteration of them was the two singles with Will Putney, um, the No Hope, No Love. Oh, that sound, my yeah. favorite. <laughs> That's when they dropped that single. I was just like, oh, here we go. <laughs> Too good. So what uh, this is a solo project for you. So what kind of what are your goals with this project? Honestly, like when I first started this, I didn't really have a goal. I was just like, I need to make a song again. So my initial idea was just like drop a song and see what happens. And then it got a fair, fairly decent response. And I was like, okay, well, I'll keep going and just made a few more. And now I'm at an EP, but everybody always asks me, they're like, if you don't have a band, when are you playing shows? You know, what are you going to do with it? And honestly, I'm just kind of taking it as it comes. Um, I would like it to be a full band one day, but I'm also just extremely busy with work and, you know, my wife and kid and, you know, the whole family schedule. So it's like, if I can make it a band one day, it has to, you know, be with like-minded in individuals that understand schedule. And it's definitely probably not going to turn into any, anything that's like, you know, balls to the walls, like straight touring and trying to become something huge. I was going to ask about like shows and tours, but it's like, it's hard to do that when I get, yeah, you're just doing it day by day, seeing what happens. If something happens, sweet. If yeah. not, that's okay too. You can always just keep putting out music, um, however you want to do it. Um, so after the EP, I guess, what do you want to do next? That's, that's the big question. Um, I've had some talks with a few different people around the Denver area that may be interested in possibly making it a band. Um, you know, if something like that was to pan out, then I would definitely like to take a step in that direction. Otherwise, I think I'm just going to keep chilling and writing songs as I can and drop them out and we'll just kind of play it by ear, I guess. Will you continue doing the have instrumentals made and throw your vocals over kind of deal? How do you see yeah. yourself doing that? I think so. Um, working with Tyler has been really cool. Um, he's very open minded and understands like my ideas because I can just send him like a few songs I'm really liking at the time and be like, OK, this time stamp from like 115 to 120, like that type of sound is really cool. But like, you know, we'll stretch it out and make it huge and then add this. So when I can just explain something like that to somebody over the phone <laughs> and they're helping me bring my idea to life, I love it it's it's been a lot less stress you know trying to put a song together perfect so what do you do in your downtime if you have any downtime <laughs> i usually just hanging out with my kid uh we hit the skate park every week multiple times that's like his big thing he's huge on the scooter and skateboard right now so he dragged an old man out there making me figure out how to get my bearings back and ride a skateboard again Hadn't done that in like 10 years till he came along. Oh. But between that and like disc golf and all of his things, he's always in martial arts and soccer. And I'm just like constantly going to games and practices and things like that. So I think my favorite thing is just watching him grow up, honestly, and like figuring everything out. That's my probably my oh. favorite thing. <laughs> now, now you're getting in the feels. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I have yet to make this post, but maybe I will. I don't know how people have time for anything. It's mind blowing to me that people have a job and a band and this and that and kids. It's like, how do you find the time? But 
yeah. whatever. Maybe maybe they're better than me <laughs> every way, in every way. It's a struggle. It's it's taken me. I actually started this project like technically in 2021, but it was a very, very slow start. I just kind of made a band name and, you know, put the page out. And then it's been extremely slow getting it going. But I th- think I kind of found a little bit of a groove now. It's more about, you know, just staying in the groove and keeping it going if things are going in the right direction. Staying in the groove and you don't have anyone pressuring you. It's like, okay, right. you have to do this right now. You have to put out the next song. It's like, no, I don't. I can do whatever yeah. I want. <laughs> There's no pressure. I want to make a song today and drop it tomorrow. You know, that's what I'm doing. So so I always ask bands um, at the end, regardless if you've uh, done a solo project or they're just starting or they've been around a long time, do you have any advice for any bands looking to make their mark in music, whether they be starting out, trying to move up the ladder, anything at all? I will say I I've, I've been in bands in the past like early 2000s era for several years and touring and things like that. And I will say just personal experience, if you're a new band getting started and you're out there playing shows and trying to make a name for yourself, do not oversaturate your hometown. That is a really big downfall. It seems really cool at first if you're playing a show, you know, every week or every other week or whatever it is in your hometown and all your people are showing up. But in time, that really does hurt you. You got to be able to like kind of spread out your wings a little bit and saturate your surrounding area, not just your hometown. Absolutely. Advertising and staying up on social media, it can be draining, but it's a must. You got to stay up an algorithm or you disappear. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, so I don't know what it's like over in um, Denver. I, I've never been there, but I'm assuming you guys have like carnivals every once in a while. Yeah, here and there. Probably like um, summer, fall kind of thing. Yeah, usually like end of spring and beginning of fall kind of thing. So you now you're wondering, what, what does this have to do with anything? <laughs> I, I like going to a carnival once a year. I'm yeah. not going to go to a carnival once a month if it's at the same spot. Yep. every month eventually people are going to go i'm good on carnivals for the rest of my life so yes same thing don't oversaturate play out go have fun mm-hmm. um any final words you want to say to uh listeners fans anything at all no man i just i really appreciate everybody's support so far um the amount of like feedback and responses i've gotten over what i've done so far is really encouraging and definitely appreciate everything from everybody so far and if they're interested in the new album there's a pre-save link in my bio would be greatly appreciated if you went and clicked on your favorite platform and hit that pre-save um but other than that hope everybody just jams it and has a good day perfect um jake appreciate a little bit of your time today i'm going to talk to you here in a little bit off air okay sounds good man so that's Jake Murphy from the band Beyond All Hope. It's a solo project. Maybe it'll evolve into something else, but that's okay if it doesn't. Still kick-ass music. Um, Beyond All Hope has a new EP dropping on July 26th called Life Cycles. So make sure you check that out whenever you can, especially if you're a fan of heavy music. Appreciate you checking out this episode of the podcast. See you guys next time.